This is uh, MathHeals.com where you can find more links to math and computer science YouTube videos. Let's take a look at greatest common factor uh, slash grouping for factoring. Let me uh, go over the factoring steps. Phone's ringing again. I swear that rings more times. Now our first method of factoring is GCF. Now this stands for greatest common factor. And I'll put an asterisk by this. We always try to do this uh, method. Uh, doesn't mean it'll always work, but you always try to do it. When I say you try to do it, you look at it and see if they have something in common. Our second method is grouping. And this is when you have four or more terms. So if it has four more terms, you don't have a choice. You try to use grouping. Our third one will be taken. The, the, these first two are what this lesson's about, and then these uh, these other methods we'll see in other other uh, other lessons. The third method is the PST method. And this is when it's of the form x squared plus bx plus c. Now the key part here is you have an x squared, you have an x, you have no x, and there's no number in front of your x squared. Excuse me. The b and c uh, usually represent numbers. They don't have to. The fourth one is the key number method. And this is when it's of the form ax squared plus bx plus c. Now the key part here is you have an x squared, x, no x, and there's a number in front of your x squared. The fifth uh, method is the dots method. That stands for difference of two squares. And this is when you got two terms with a minus between it. So two terms with a minus between them. Now it doesn't have to be two terms, it can be two anythings with a minus between them. And that's really vague, isn't it? But um, if you were to go on and take trig, uh, you may see something that says uh, sine squared minus cosine squared. And as long as you have two items with a minus between them, uh, then you can use this method. Now there's uh, a couple other ones we'll add on here. Um, there's difference of two cubes and sum of two cubes. Um, but these are the five main ones. If you if you get uh, these down and you're good at these, then you'll do well in uh, college algebra. Uh, most of the problems revolve around these. There's just a few that ha encompass the uh, difference and sum of two cubes. Okay, let's look at our first one here. 9x minus 81. Now they say factor after greatest common factor, but they wouldn't have to say that because I just start going through my techniques. And our first one says the GCF. Well, we got two terms here, separate pluses and minuses. First thing I do is I look at the numbers, 9 and 81. And I think the largest number divided in both of those, which would be 9. So we're going to factor out a 9. Factor means divide out. Uh, 9 divided by 9 is 1. And the x remains minus 81 divided by 9 is 9. And we can drop that to that 1, make it invisible. So we got 9 times x minus 9. So if you have a numbers in common, you look for the largest number divides into both of them. Let's look at this next one. We got 10x squared um, plus 25x. Now we have two terms again. Let's look at the numbers first. 10 and 25. We're looking for a largest number divides into both of those, which would be 5. Now for the x's. This one has two x's, this one has one x. I want to factor out most x's I can, but I can't factor out two x's if this one only has one. So we're going to pull out a single x. It's always your smallest exponent, in case you're wondering. We have x to the first power here, so we bring out one x. 
Now, if this had been x to the fourth and this had been x to the third, we would bring out three x's, x to the third. Well, 10 divided by uh, 5 is 2. Now, I always uh, tell people if you're learning for the first time, envision this. You've got two x's sitting on your table. Somebody comes up and takes one of your x's away. How many x's do you have left? Well, we have one x left. Plus 25 divided by 5 is 5. We had one x, and that x was pulled out in front, so no x is left. So our answer is 5x times 2x plus 5. Now this next one has a note that goes along with it. Let me go ahead and show you what the problem looks like. So it looks like this right here. Notice our first term is negative, and that's what our note revolves around. It says, and this is for GCF, if your first term, so if your first term is negative, always factor out a negative. So again, if your first term is negative, always factor out a negative. Okay, so we've got negative 3x to the third plus 12x squared minus 9x. I'll begin with my first term is negative, so I know I'm bringing negative out. Now, 3, 12, and 9. I'm looking for largest number divides into all those, which is 3. Here we have 3x's, here we have 2x's, here we have 1x. So we're going to bring out the one with the smallest uh, exponent, so we'll bring out 1x. Negative 3 divided by negative 3 is 1. We had three x's. I took one of those x's away, so that leaves us two x's. 12 divided by negative 3 is negative 4. We had uh, two x's. We pulled one away, so that leaves us a single x. Negative 9 divided by negative 3 gives us a uh, positive 3. Um, we had one x. We pulled that away, so there's no x's left. So we got negative 3x times x squared minus 4x plus 3. Now this one actually factors further, but all they're asking us to do in these problems is factor out GCF. So that'd be our answer. Oh, by the way, to check these is very easy. Um, first off, you can, uh, assuming you don't have anything else in common in here, to go backwards, you just multiply these. Negative 3x times x squared gives you negative 3x to the third. Negative 3x times negative 4x is positive 12x squared. And negative 3x times 3 gives you negative 9x. Now that won't tell you whether you factored out enough, um, but if you look at the what's inside the parentheses here and you don't see anything else in common, then you're, you, you're where you need to be. Let's take a look at another, another GCF. 7x times 3x plus 2. plus 2 times 3x plus 2. Now this is um, these are considered together and these are considered together. The reason why is because this is 7 times x times 3x plus 2 and this is 2 times 3x plus 2. So then it's in there separated by plus here. So everything's multiplication in there. Well if we look at what they have in common Sometimes you have numbers in common, sometimes you have x's to a power in common, sometimes you have anything in common. See how these both have a 3x plus 2 in common? So I'll factor out a 3x plus 2. Now you can cross out the 3x plus 2's to see what goes in your second set of parentheses. So if I cross out the 3x plus 2's up here, we're left with 7x plus 2. And that's what goes in our second set of parentheses. And that's our answer. Let's look at uh, another one of those. 3b plus 2, b plus 1, 5b plus 2, and b plus 1. Same instructions, factor out the greatest common factor. Now these are considered 1, and these are considered 1 because they're multi multiplication. This times this, this times this. 
So if I look at what I um, have um, put lines under and look for what they have in common, they both have a B plus 1. So I'll factor out a B plus 1 out in front. Now to see what goes in your second set of parentheses, you can cross out the B plus 1's here. So cross those out. And we're left with 3B plus 2 plus 5B plus 2. Which gives us B plus 1. Uh, and then combine together like terms. No matter where you are in math, you should always do that. 3B plus 5B is 8B. 2 plus 2 is 4. Now after I um, factor that out, I see that um, the second set of parentheses, 8B plus 4, they also have something in common. They're both divisible by 4. So I'll factor out a 4. 8 divided by 4 is 2, so we've got 2B plus 4 divided by 4 is 1. Now typically, when you got a number in the middle like that, you, you go ahead and put a clear out in front. So our answer is going to be 4 times B plus 1 times 2B plus 1. Okay, let's look at grouping. We got 3x plus ax minus 3y minus ay. Now it says factor by grouping. Be better if they didn't say anything. First thing we always do is look for GCF. Well, some of them have threes in common, some of them have a's in common, some of them have x's, some of them have y's, but all four terms have nothing in common. So there's no GCF on this one. So I kind of start going through my methods. Grouping is four more terms. Well, this has four more terms, so there's no choice. You're going to use grouping. Now we're going to group the first two terms together, and we'll group the last two terms together. What you'll find is that there's um, three different uh, ways of grouping. I'm pretty sure the only ones we're going to look at in this lesson, though, is the first one. And the first one is where you try equal groups. Equal groups means you group the first two together and the last two together. If you have six terms, you group the first three together and the last three together. Or the first two, the middle two, and the last two. But you have equal groups. Now if that doesn't work, then you rearrange the terms and Try equal groups again. I know my writing isn't that great. And then if that doesn't work, then you try unequal groups. So you try unequal groups. What do I mean by unequal groups? You group first three to but together and last one by itself. Okay. Now looking at our first group, we cover up a second group. We don't look at it all. We look at just the 3x plus ax. We look for what they have in common GCF-wise. Well, these both have an x, so I'll factor that out. And that leaves us 3 plus a. Now looking at my second group, first thing I notice is the first term is negative, so I know negative is going to come out. And they both have a y, so I'll factor out a y. Well, that negative is gone, that y is gone, so we've got 3. And that negative and that y is gone, so we've got plus a. Now our goal with grouping is to get this parentheses the same as that parentheses, which it is. So now we'll factor out the 3 plus a. And to see what goes in our second set of parentheses, remember you can cross these out. And what isn't crossed out is what goes here. So we'll put x minus y here. And that would be our answer. Um, yeah, I probably have room for... Next one. So we got 4a squared minus 28a minus 8a plus 56. Well, first off, GCF. I notice that they're all divisible by 4, so I can factor a 4 out. And that leaves us a squared minus 28 divided by 4 is 7, so 7a minus 8 divided by 4 is 2, so we've got 2a, plus 56 divided by 4 is um, 14, like that. So always look for your GCF first. Well, now what's left inside the parentheses is um, four more terms. That's grouping. 
We try to group the first two together and last two terms together. Four just carries that out in front, doesn't change anything. Looking at my first group, the a squared minus 7a. They have an a in common, so I factor that out, and that leaves me a minus 7. Now my second group, um, they're both divisible by 2, my first term's negative, so I factor out negative 2, and that gives me a minus 7. Now again, our goal is to get this parentheses here the same as that parentheses, which it is. So I'll put it out in front, not, not in front of the 4 though. So we got 4 times a minus 7, and then decide what goes in your second set of parentheses, you can cross out these a minus 7s. And what isn't crossed out is what goes here. So this would be a minus 2. And that would be our answer. Let's take a look at one more grouping one. We've got 36x squared minus 18xy minus 4xy plus 2y squared. Now GCF, uh, they're all divisible by 2, and I think that's it, looks like. So I'll factor out a 2. 36 divided by 2 is 18, so we've got 18x squared minus 18 divided by 2 is 9, so 9xy, minus 4 divided by 2 is 2, so 2xy, plus 2 divided by 2 is 1, so I drops away, and we've got y squared. Now looking at what's inside the parentheses, uh, we've got four more terms. So I'm going to try a grouping. Group first two together, group last two together. 2 carries down. Looking at my first group, the 18 and 9, they're both visible by 9, and they both have 1x. 18 divided by 9 is 2. Um, took one of those x's away, so that leaves us a single x, minus that 9's gone, that x is gone, so left with y. Then our second group here, first term is negative, so I know negative's coming out, and they both have 1y one, one in common. So that gives us 2x minus y. Our goal was, again, to get uh, this parentheses the same as this, which it is. So I can factor out to 2x minus y. And to decide what goes in your second set of parentheses, again, you can cross out these 2x minus y's. And what isn't crossed out is what goes here, which would be 9x minus y. And that would be your answer. Now that was uh, GCF and grouping. In uh, other videos, we'll co cover these other other methods uh, with the addition of the last last two uh, difference in sum of two cubes. So go ahead and save this.